down another TNA episode. So let's talk about TNA Impact, people. Now stay to the end. Don't be an asshole or a dick and actually watch the whole fucking video. Now granted, I thought this was actually a pretty good episode. Solid like a rock, you know the song. So this was actually a pretty decent to good episode. Nothing really was spectacular, but things got built up and I really did enjoy this episode. Now we kind of kicked this thing off with the open invitational battle royal, which is kind of foolish when you really think about it because an open invitation, you would think it's some kind of big surprise. But guess what? There was no real big surprise. Now, Battle Royal, obviously, uh, the winner will go on to face Lassie next week for the world title. So who wins? None other than Mike Bennett himself, the Miracle Man. It came down to him, Eddie Edwards, and Moose. Moose and him kind of, him and Eddie pretty much go over the top rope because Bennett kind of takes him over. Bennett wins. He's going up against Lassie. So I thought that should be an interesting matchup. Uh, Bennett might need to do a couple of squats in order to kind of pick up Lashley because everybody knows this guy really doesn't really do leg day. But overall, like I said, I'm interested in seeing the clash of styles between Bennett and Lashley. They had a little bit of altercation behind the scenes. That should be interesting to see. Also, Moose and him were also kind of conflicting. They're setting up, obviously, Moose versus Bennett at Battle Floor, as I said before. It should be an interesting thing. It did happen very quickly, but I understand where they're trying to go with this uh, to begin with. Uh, also, the next thing we started with is Brother Nero and Broken Matt Hardy. Now, look, this is also some great gold for the most part, but this didn't really do anything much except telling him to stop being a spot monkey, whatever it may be. Then Decay kind of comes out. They're setting up their match against Bound for Glory. I like the differences of crazy we got going here because the Matt Hardy craziness kind of works against kind of like a normal person, maybe against EC3 or Drew Galloway or whatever it may be. But it doesn't necessarily work with somebody uh, or a group as crazy and ridiculous as Decay. So I really personally did enjoy that. So I, I like seeing the different type of styles. Uh, Decay talks about how they're going to like end the Hardy's career or whatever it may be. But then we get a match with Abyss and Jeff Hardy. They talk about how their history, whatever it may be. Look, I like Abyss and I like Jeff Hardy a while back ago. But let's be real here. Their classic matches are way behind them and they are not looking forward to any like really great matches this match was really not spectacular but at the end of the day pretty much abyss wins with a black hole slam uh and that's pretty much it matt hardy bites you know um crazy steve's ear off or he bites his ear crazy steve eventually laughs whatever it may be because he tries to abduct maxwell uh but like i said i like the differences of crazy battling against each other it adds for a very unique uh battle of characters for the most part and it seemed like Jeff Hardy started to embrace the brokenness, as Matt Hardy has been saying. But like I said, a very cool thing. The next thing we pretty much is like the Bennett and Lashley segment. I, I liked it, it because it showed that Lashley and Bennett are complete opposites. But it also showed that uh, they're setting up future things with Moose. Um, so I, I really did enjoy that. The next thing we kind of go is a very weird thing. Because Billy Corgan's talking to Sienna. Whatever it may be, he says you got a kind of like a challenge match. Whatever it may be for the women's, the knockouts title. I was about to fuck that up. But it's Marty Bell versus Jay versus Sienna versus Ali versus Madison Rain. What do we learn about this match? Well, we learned that Madison Rain really needs a sandwich. I mean, like, seriously. The girl needs some food. She's very, very small. Marty Bell's ass is kind of, you know, really out of control. Then Puerto Ricans, man. Uh, and overall, this was for the knockouts title, which I actually didn't really realize until, like, towards the end but um, pretty much, you know, Sienna and, uh, you know, pretty much Sienna gets knocked out by Allie, okay? We get that done. Marty Bell gets knocked out. Allie somehow falls on top of Madison Rain due to, you know, the attack by Jade. And then, therefore, we get uh, a new women's champion, which is Allie. Now, everybody knows Allie can wrestle. We know that already. We get that. Cherry Bomb. I heard everybody kind of talk about that. The thing about it is that I don't mind her winning. I kind of mind her winning here, though. I just feel like... Maybe could have happened at Bound for Glory a big moment, then they kind of could have started a new feud. But unfortunately, I just feel like it kind of happened out of nowhere, and I guess that was the whole point. But it didn't really seem like it was going anywhere. Now, where does Gail Kim go? It's pretty obvious. I hope that Gail Kim, since she's out of the title picture for now, she battles Maria at Bound for Glory. That sets that up. Who does Allie battle? I'm guessing she's going to turn face against Sienna. But who knows? This knockout division really needs some structure, and hopefully they kind of figure that thing out. Uh, because I feel like we got something good here, but I'm really tired of Madison Rain. The girl does nothing for me, just in general. Uh, the EC3, uh, Drew Galloway segments were very, very bright. Um, I liked them. I thought they seemed interesting and fresh, but there are some times where it felt like it was a soap opera. It also seemed like it was a commercial for Hennessy or the most interesting man in the world. It looked like they were taking place in Miami. Uh, every, has anybody seen, like, the 1800s or the Cuervos? 
commercials. That's what it kind of felt like. Um, but they were entertaining. I liked the, the friendly rivalry that they were kind of going for there. Um, but, you know, obviously to no avail later on eventually. But also, then we, the next thing we get is Eli Drake, the fact of life, talking about the X Division. Eli Drake still managed to be one of the better parts of the TNA roster. And he's talking about the X Division. Looking at the X Division, I really do not like this division now. From, um, you know, what's the name? Baron, Sut Baron Sutter or whatever the name is. You know, Zima Ion, Mandrews, you know. Uh, you know, what's that, uh, Spud or whatever it may be. These guys just kind of feel like they're very bland. There's nobody really interesting. We need something kind of to click here. Uh, I feel like they really need to reboot the X Division. Who should be champion? I'm going to assume it'd be Zima Ion because he's getting the most build out of everybody in here. But maybe that's just me. Uh, but it is what it is. That kind of ends with Zima Ion kind of attacking, you know, Eli Drake. Maybe they start a feud. I don't know. I really don't care. Uh, but move on. And that's just a fact of life. And the next thing is, um... EC3 versus Drew Galloway. So, let me tell you something, okay? The thing is, this match was actually pretty good. He, uh, fucking, uh, Drew Galloway slams him on top of the steel steps. That was brutal. He does a fucking, uh, tombstone. That was actually kind of cool. Maybe shouldn't do that too much. Uh, but at the end of the match, I was wondering, is Aaron Rex going to be kind of a little bit pointless here? Is he going to do something? Or is he just going to be, you know, just there? Because I feel like the effect of Aaron Rex is in TNA has kind of worn off a bit. But the match ends, you know, uh, EC3, he gets to win, he's going bound for it, as we kind of expected. And I called this last week, if you ever see my review last week, I said it, fucking Drew Galloway is going to most likely either attack, um, you know, Aaron Rex or vice versa. And then that's going to be setting up a few there. It turns out it was actually Aaron Rex that gets attacked by Drew Galloway. And now Drew Galloway is either heel, maybe he goes a little bit emo, whatever it may be. But now they set up the Galloway versus Aaron Rex feud. They set up the Lassie versus, you know, uh, EC3 feud. Bennett versus Moose feud. You know, Gail Kim and Maria, most likely. Sienna and Allie. There's a lot of feuds kind of being built up here. And I like that they're not wasting time here. Uh, but let's see how this goes. I enjoyed this impact. Nothing really spectacular. But overall, I got the job done. It was actually quite entertaining. But that's just my thought. Comment, subscribe, and like. I'm Chris Smith. Signing out. Awkward.